हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस क्विकली स्टार्ट विद द कंस्ट्रक्शनल पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडक्शन मोटर थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिकल मशीन्स टुडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग अबाउट द थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर द कंस्ट्रक्शनल पार्ट्स एंड द वर्किंग ऑफ द थ्री फेज इंडक्शनल मोटर सो एवरी मोटर every machine is divided into two basic parts the stator and rotor and same here it is here in this case so three phase induction motor is also divided into stator and rotor so the stator let us start with the stator we will be studying the stator in detail and thereafter we will be studying rotor in detail so stator stator of the induction motor looks somewhat in this manner somewhat in this manner this is the state of frame this is the state of frame then these are the slots it consists of slots in which the conductors are placed here is my rotor okay so the stator diagram looks somewhat like this so the first point to be noted is a stator is made up of high grade alloy steel the first point which is to be noted here it is it, it is made up of high grade alloy steel second point is it consists of laminations on the inner side of the periphery consists of laminations on the inner side of the periphery to reduce the losses and it consists of slots then it is having slots and on those those slots these are the slots slots mean, means a part which is being cut from there so this part is being cut from here and on those slots the conductors are placed any conductors are placed yes uh, and the outer part of the stator is known as stator frame and stator frame is made up of cast iron stator frame is made up of made of cast iron okay it is made up of cast iron and it is having slots slots are there on which the conductors are placed slots are there on which the conductors are placed these conductors can be connected to the star or delta accordingly according to the application they are connected to the winding they are connected to the uh, winding uh, and it may be the winding maybe the star or delta they can connected to the any connection according to the application okay so the conductors are placed which may be arranged star or delta okay so these are some points to be noted for the stator now let us move on to the rotor for the rotor there are two types of rotor in the induction motors squirrel cage and the slip ring 
if the motor is having a squirrel cage rotor then it is said to be squirrel cage induction motor and if the rotor is slip ring type or wound type the another name for the slip ring is the wound type then the induction motor is slip ring induction motor okay so these are basically two types of induction motor so for the rotor for the rotor let us start with the squirrel cage the do the squirrel cage rotor consists of uninsulated bar conductors which are placed parallel to each other let us draw the diagram of the squirrel cage induction motor consist of uninsulated bar conductors second point the bar conductors are short circuited with the help of end rings these are the end rings bar conductors are short circuited with the help of end rings and the bar conductors are skewed and the bar conductors here are skewed skewed means they are connected parallel to each other so these are the basic points of the squirrel cage rotor why the skewing is done skewing is why the skewing is being done the skewing is done for some reasons and the reason behind that are firstly they provide uniform torque they provide uniform torque all over the all over the motor the torque will be produced that will be produced uniform the second point is that the noise is redu reduced so noise reduction is there after skewing uh, after skewing that is after placing these bar conductors parallel to each other the noise tendency is reduced the noise tendency is reduced these are bar conductors the noise tendency is reduced okay then after that the third point is the locking tendency is also reduced the locking tendency means if the stator teeth and the rotor teeth uh, gets attached to each other then the motor gets locked the motor gets locked means the motor is unable to move right now if the both the teeth get in uh, get attached to each other and they fix each other together then the motor will be not able to move so the locking tendency is reduced with the help of skewing so skewing is done in the case of cage rotors and it looks like a cage over here like a cage it looks the bar conductors they are in uninsulated bar conductors and they are placed parallel to the shaft axis they are placed parallel to the shaft axis Uh, parallel to each other as well as to the parallel to the shaft axis if i draw a shaft axis the axis will be somewhat like this parallel coming out okay and they are then connected to the end rings they short circuited to the end rings so uh, so it looks like a cage over here and that's why the name has been introduced over here as squirrel cage rotor 
okay and the name has been introduced over here as squirrel cage rotor so let us quickly jot down the reasons why the skewing is done why the skewing is done skewing is necessary the first reason is that provides uniform torque okay the second reason is that noise is reduced okay and the third reason is that locking tendency is reduced this was all about the stator about, about the first constructional part of the induction motor that was stator so we have studied the stator over here in the next video we will be studying about the rotor all the parts of the rotor and the two types of rotor we will be studying in the next video okay if you like my videos you can subscribe my channel and if you are having any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you